bin auch das Herkules, Herkules, der Hercules Beetle, er ist one of the most prominent Beetles in the Beetle breeding a scene because it's so huge, it's so spectacular, and it's from a tropical uh, rainforest uh, where they live in endangered habitats like very big, very old hollow uh, trees as a larvae and where you can find them sometimes high in the canopy of the trees uh, on the bark of these uh, giants of the rainforest and we can breed them at home in a relatively small place if we know the technique and today I want to show you how I prepare the breeding box to start breeding very small L1 larvae of uh, Dynostis Hercules Hercules. I do that in a box 22 liters if you have seen the video about the L1 larvae of Megasoma elephas. It's practically the same system. I, on the bottom I put some very dry pieces of wood pellets of, uh, of only beech wood just to prevent the soaking wet bottom of a breeding container where they can um, develop uh, anaerobe um, situations where um, the, the gases can can uh, come out and uh, that would endanger the lorry in the box. So to suck up all the excess water in the substrate or in the in the air humidity, I put on the bottom this kind of uh, very dry uh, wood uh, just uh, to prevent uh, an overwetted bottom of the of the breathing box and then I just uh, covered the bottom with these with these pieces of uh, only beech wood and then also for the larvae uh, it's kind of a, a sign of that the bottom of the box is reached when they come down uh, here and they they see only this um, this wood here uh, in the form of a sawdust or whatever it is then later. Of course they can't eat that because the larvae they can only eat wood that is uh, pre-digested by mushrooms. Uh, so this needs a, a little time uh, to ferment and to develop into a stage where uh, all the larvae can eat this kind of uh, substrate. And then I cover the bottom with what is called uh, black soil. It's uh, fermented sawdust of each uh, with bran. It lasts around half an year um, to develop at this stage of a black um, material that smells like the, the soil of a forest. Uh, a little bit sweet but very uh, gently it, 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 it's a good taste, it's not uh, uh, hurting your nose, it's, it's, uh, it must smell like a healthy forest soil. And with that we cover the bottom of the box, you can also press it here a little bit. Well, that's the first uh, layer, or the second if you want, on the bottom of the box. And then of course, what is the most valuable thing? that you have at the beetle breeders are your white rotten wood pieces. You know that larvae of these giant beetles, they eat huge amount of white rotten uh, wood in these huge trees. There is a lot of this material uh, that is already pre-digested by mushrooms, so that's why it's very soft and you can take out the things by hand and also the larvae, also the small ones, they can easily chew into this material and eat it up and they like to eat that stuff. So that's the next thing in the box that we put big chunks of this white rotten wood into the, into the box because they stay in the box now for around the four months and in that time they need a lot of this uh, material uh, to eat and you can just fill the box with this material and also with the smaller pieces so like this well 
I have to look on to see whether we can put this on the top. Oh, it's a little bit too big for the box, but we can try to make it like that. So anyway, so if you have filled it up, then you can put some of the third material in. This is um, flex oil with rotten leaves also. That's what you find sometimes in hollow trees because the hollow trees they have holes from birds or, or bats that live inside these hollow trees that the, where the wind can also blow in some of the leaves. So that's also a thing that you can use to cover up now these white rotten wood pieces. And then we have to shake the box well so that all the substrate is going into the airspace between the locks. So, and if there are some air holes in the in the box, that's not a big problem. But if it, if you can compact it a little bit, that would be very nice. The rest of the work will do the lorry then because they want to dig down and every time they do this they help a little bit to compress the substrate. So and that's about the, the layers of the breeding box or rearing box for the L1 lorry. So what we need more is of course the lorry itself. So let's have a look here. Um, I brought with me some of the of the boxes where I have put in between five and seven eggs uh, three weeks ago, 23rd of July, today 15th of August. Um, also one box where there is already an L1 in there. Also here there should be an L1 in there. Here there should be some eggs in here. We have to see whether uh, they have developed already. And of course we can uh, check it from outside. Here I have another box where the eggs didn't hatch yet. So we can have a look how they, how we can check from outside uh, whether they have already hatched or not. Here you see this is an egg here, this white, the white stuff. There's another one here, uh, so we don't open this box, we just open the boxes where we can see from outside that there must be a, a larva uh, inside. Here I don't see anything, but I have written on the box that it's an L1, so let's see whether that is true. Whether we find something in here, or whether, whether the larva has disappeared. No, there was a. This is an egg that has not developed. Uh, it's an unhatched egg that has blackened, and that's a sign that the egg is not healthy uh, anymore. So this probably will not uh, hatch out of this out of this egg. So I think we can put it away. They must stay white uh, till the end. If you want. You can make a little experiment with the box and try and try to put it back into a smaller box like this, for example, and wet it a little bit and then just check it in around, let's say, two to three weeks, whether you can see an L1 larvae or not. But mostly, if they are in a stage like this, it's very difficult uh, for them to hatch in a normal uh, way. So what have we have written here that this should be an L1 in here. Let's see whether we find it or where it is then. It's a little bit, it's a big box for an L1 larva so uh, let's see whether we find it in this big uh, box. And of course sometimes when they are so small they are difficult to see here in the box. Well, When was it in? That was not long ago, so probably we see some, not something. This is a one, I think. Oh, here. Yeah, here is one. Yeah. 
So we, you see here's a L1 lava of the Hercules people. Uh, it's probably better to put it on something like this so we can see a little bit better. Yeah. Very small as you can see, uh, only one, a little bit more than one uh, centimeter. And now we are looking for a place uh, to put the larvas larvae in the box. So I say we, we make some holes like this one here, two here, three here, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we can dig in all the L1 larvas a little bit separate from each other. Uh, they can dig down then into, into the substrate. And don't forget if you place the larvas in the little holes to put some of the old original material that they are used to sit in around them and then, oh here's an egg, I forgot, interesting, it just fell out of the substrate so I, ha I will have to uh, put this egg, this is now a healthy egg, you see, this is quite different color than the other one that we just tried to uh, rescue and also for this egg of course I prepared uh, a small box like this, it's only 80 milliliter, I have to wet it because it's very dry the material here and I put of course also here some of the original material in make a little hole then I take the egg and I just place it in the middle and cover it again with the rest of the material so this probably uh, will hatch in, a, in the next uh, few days I put it here side and then we are looking for more uh, more larvas here is another one yeah this one young L1 so this comes into the next hole here this is number two and now we go on doing that until we have filled all the holes of this uh, of this box and of course this material here I give then at the end I give it back on the top of the material so when I forgot a larva in here or an egg it has the chance to hatch inside of this uh, bigger box anyway so let's see what's that here here uh, yeah could be that there's a larva here Let's check here. Yeah, here's one. Sometimes they just sit in the little knot where the egg was placed, and if you open it, you see they don't move around uh, in the whole substrate. Like, for example, Goriatus larvae, they do that. Uh, the Megasoma larvae and Dinosta larvae, they stay mostly in the place where they. Uh, hatched from the egg. So this is one more that I can put in one of these notes here. It's number three already. So here I see already the fourth, number four. Also very freshly hatched from the egg. Very small L1. Just prepare the hole so that you put some of the original material in here and then place it very carefully into that little hole and cover it with its original substrate then we go on looking for even more here's another one also they have they have hatched two three days ago here's an egg now i show you the freshly hatched l1 and the egg together so look, the egg is, seems practically bigger than the than the L1 uh, larvae that you see here. So also for this egg, of course, I have to prepare a little box where I can put it and where we can wait till it hatches. Also, and the little L1 larvae 
the number five already uh, will be placed in this little hole here. I try not to touch them with my hands uh, because you never know what kind of uh, bacteria or things you have on your hand that can hurt or can uh, transmit diseases that can kill this very fragile small larvae. Here's another one. Also L1, so now I take the egg and put it into the newly prepared small box here. Uh, this seems already very big, the egg, so I think it can it can be that it hatches in around three to five days, I would guess. Well, and the larva is the number six already. is placed in this hole here covered with substrate so we need four more and then the box is, um, is full more than ten you shouldn't put into this box if you really want to wait for four months because when they are uh, L3 first stage they are uh, then pretty big and it's good that you don't uh, have to think all the time. Here are three uh, larvae, very small one, this one, two, three, here, it's a little bit bigger. Let's see what we find. Yeah, here's another one. So we already have our ten larvae. Larvae of Dinostis Hercules here is, I think, what's that? No, it's only. Now, what you can see also that not every egg uh, hatches, not from every egg you get, uh, egg, you get an L1 uh, larvae. It can happen that if you have to take them out of the substrate that you uh, hurt the egg or you just. Uh, touch it with your hand or it's too dry or whatever so they can uh, die and, and, and stay undeveloped in the substrate and that's it's a pity but it's that's normal that you don't get from every egg one L1 larvae that's also why some people say let's let them in the box till they are a little bit uh, bigger and then uh, when they are a little bit bigger than like L1, like let's say L2 or big L1, they uh, are also not that fragile anymore. So we have one of the last four we put into this two, three, and the last one, four, cover it with the original substrate. So and then that's it. Uh, we just fill up the material on the top of the box like this you can press it slightly but not too much because it could be that there are that there's an egg or a very small L1 uh, left in the substrate that we forget or overse have overseen and we cover it with a, with a lid where there are also some small holes, not too many, some small holes are enough and that's it for the first stage of Dinostis Hercules Hercules and we come back in around four months to see how they have developed in that kind of uh, layered substrate. Thanks for watching.